This is a scam call center, and I've been gathering evidence of their scams for almost one full year. Gaining access to their computers and their CCTV security cameras allowed me to get a good understanding of their whole entire scam process. But could you imagine this infrastructure randomly shutting off in the middle of their scam shift? Well, that's exactly what happened on March 7th, 2024. All of their computers and devices shut down with nothing left besides one lonely computer on the network. Let's open the webcam and hopefully get the reason as to why all the agent's computers just randomly disappeared out of nowhere. Why am I hearing like tape being pulled? I'm hearing like tape. Yo, what's happening? Oh shoot, they're moving the computers, bro. Dude, they're moving the computers. Are they being raided? In my last video, I already briefly showcased this call center and showed some footage of their CCTV cameras. And I also talked about how I managed to locate and hack this call center that on the surface level might seem fairly innocent. Well, I can tell you now, these people that you see on screen are 100% scammers. And how did I make this discovery? Well, that's exactly what I discussed in part one of this mini series on these New Delhi based scammers. Just to give you a quick rundown, I got access to this call center back in April of 2023. I found a pretty sketchy website by doing a simple Google search for Microsoft's phone number. I called that phone number and I got in contact with someone in this office. I made up some random issue I had with my computer, and the agent that I was on the phone with proceeded to tell me a bunch of lies and told me hackers were trying to steal my personal information. Long story short, these scammers want remote access to my computer, and when I let them gain this remote access, it became very easy for me to infiltrate the main network. On this network, I found their set of CCTV security cameras. I tried to guess the password, but I could not manage to log in, so I had to trick someone into changing the CCTV password for me. From here, I got to see everything that goes on inside of this massive scam call center. This is my computer. I bought it. No one should disable me from my own computer. I'm mad as hell right someone, now. Someone disabled your Microsoft account from your computer, okay? Your account is disabled. That's why you're not get the option to sign in by your Microsoft account. The CCTV cameras in combination with these scammers, their phone system gave me the opportunity to see exactly how this operation is ran with both video and audio capturing the entire fraudulent scheme. When you go for that security, you can see the total security will, you will get here. So no, I'm not doing up. that. I'm not buying all that crap right now. And this thing is safe here. This is a safe thing which can protect you. And secure email. I'm not purchasing. I'm not purchasing. This sounds like a ad. Yeah, and you got this problem because someone using your email without your knowledge from the Russia, from a different country. Okay, but I don't want to purchase anything today, so thank you anyway. And since these scammers initiate a remote connection to their victims' computers and phones, they are essentially able to save and view a bunch of personal information. Scam call centers just like this one store victims' personal information on vulnerable spreadsheets that could even have your personal data and leave it up for grabs for anyone to save and keep. Scammers get access to this type of data thanks to data brokers who collect your information and sell it. Data broker selling information is vital to the operations of scam call centers just like the one you see right here. But how do you solve this problem? Well, you have to search on Google for data brokers to see who has your information and manually submit opt-out requests for every single one. Data brokers are legally required to remove your information if you request an opt-out, but this is incredibly time-consuming and data brokers do not make it easy by design. So for this exact reason, I decided to team up again with the sponsor of today's video, Aura. Aura makes the process of opting out a lot easier by automatically identifying data brokers who are selling your information and they will submit all of the opt-out requests on your behalf. Even my personal information has been leaked in the past, so Aura has really helped protect me and my information by searching the dark web for email addresses, passwords, phone numbers, and even social security numbers. Aura is really easy to set up, so you don't even have to download several different apps to get things like an antivirus, a password manager, and a VPN all wrapped in one even including up to $1 million in identity theft insurance. Scammers unfortunately target elderly people, but with Aura, you're able to add up to 10 people to your plan, securing your parents or relatives' personal information. And for those of you with kids, Aura offers family protection, things like parental controls, content monitoring, and usage monitoring. 
and all of this can be obtained through my link. So make sure you head on over to aura.com slash nano on any web browser. And my link will offer a 14 day free trial, which is risk free with Aura 60 day money back guarantee. So make sure you go to the link in the description or the first pinned comment aura.com slash nano to start your online protection today. Now back to the video. So the company in question is WearDot. Their website claims they are empowering people to live their digital lives securely, but in reality, that is absolute bullshit. They are actually scamming people out of hundreds of dollars, and I have a feeling the people that own WearDot are a bit paranoid and worried if someone like me discovered their entire fraudulent scheme. Because if we go to WearDot's main website and head over to their terms of service page, we can scroll down to the ownership, license, and use section, and here we can read the following. You shall not hack into our website or text messages, or otherwise gain unauthorized access to make improper use of our content or site. <clears throat> a little bit too late for that. I've kind of been spying on you guys for like almost a year now. Get better, buddy. Additionally, it also says you will not damage, disable, disrupt, overburden, interfere with, or attempt to gain unauthorized access to any portion of our services, computer systems, servers, or networks. Not only did WearDot try to appear more legitimate by creating a terms of service page with over 27 sections covering everything from company info to intellectual property rights, they also tried to make it very clear in the billing portion that it was not Microsoft initiating this payment, but rather the company WearDot. What is WearDot actually providing to these people though? Well, they kind of offer a cyber security plan. I say kind of, because they completely lie on the phone to anyone and everyone about how you need to purchase the WearDot antivirus. How so? Well, the agents are trained to remotely connect to the computer and falsely diagnose it. There is nothing else that we can do because this is a direct Windows support. This is not a third party or this is not any other company you're directly talking to. Windows securities and we are the one who fixed this problem if you cannot do this we cannot be able to stop those hackers and they will get all your uh, bank account and the credit card information and as soon as they will get your bank account and credit card information they will wipe out whatever you have in there because they are good in doing such kind of things I have already shown you that this is a very uh, this is a very common scam that is going all over the world after the victim falls for the pitch, the scammers will take this as an opportunity to straight up commit fraud and conveniently guide the victim to WearDot's website to view one of three different payment plans. Mm -hmm. And it will enhance the performance of your computer too. The drivers will be updated and uh, the windows will be updated too. Everything is going to be like a new one and all the data which you have already in that, in that computer that is going to be wiped out, okay? So if you want to okay. proceed, we can assign you the technician. Okay, that's fine. Is it going to cost me anything? Yes. For assigning the technician and for the windows, there must be a one-time charge of $159.95. The scammers could offer the cheapest plan, which is just the basic WearDot antivirus that goes for around $27. But of course, since the scammers have someone in a vulnerable position and they're willing to pay any amount of money to fix their computer, the scammer will ignore this plan and obviously go for the most expensive ones, WearDot Ultimate and WearDot Ultimate Pro. Both of these options are given to the victim at checkout, ranging from around $290 to $430. And unlike other scammers, WearDot actually installs something on their victims' computers instead of just charging them for thin air. What are they exactly installing? Well, it's their very own antivirus. If I were to include a full analysis of WearDot's antivirus, this video would be about 40 hours long. So instead, if any of you cybersecurity researchers that are watching this video want to do their own analysis of WearDot's antivirus, you can freely just download the setup on the website or tag me on Twitter at Nanobater and I'll send you a copy myself. Spoiler, I'm pretty sure sure their AV is just ripping off virus total. And you might be asking yourself, what's the difficulty level of a scam call center like this just creating their own antivirus? Well, these people decided to rip off another antivirus by the name of Kaspersky. They use Kaspersky's SDK or software development kit by applying for a partnership on the main website and they just rebranded it to WearDot. But this antivirus actually does have an attribute that is quite difficult to obtain, an EV certificate on the antivirus. If you're not familiar with an EV certificate, it's pretty much a type of TLS slash SSL certificate that verifies that their certificate holder has undergone the most extensive level of vetting and identity background checks to certify that their website is authentic and 100% legitimate. If you get the gist, they pretty much had to submit a ton of proof and identity verification to get this type of certificate. This contributes to how satisfying it's going to be when we watch the same scammers that put all this effort into looking so legit get raided by their own local police. 
Anyways, I'm pretty interested in calculating the amount of money a scam call center like this generates in just 8 months of scamming. So this group probably on average scams around 150 victims per week. And in the time span of 8 months, they have stolen over $516,000 just from their fake Weardot antivirus campaign. Since they have generated $516,000 in revenue in only 8 months, that means they will approximately steal $64,000 per month. And by taking this figure and subtracting the average advertising cost, then dividing by the advertising cost, and finally multiplying by 100, we get a whopping $1,160. 64% return. These types of returns are very substantial and only really achievable if you're running a scam operation. And of course, since I could see these scammers' computer screens, I could also see them navigating and logging onto their CRM page. On this page, we can see things like quote unquote the star performer of the month, or as I like to call it, the most despicable scammer of the month. The agents have the ability to view their monthly sale and refund report alongside a seven day sales chart with, of course, incentive bonuses at the bottom. Not only could I see them on the actual CRM, CRM page, but I also saw the agents using a phone system. These scammers don't make normal calls, they use their computers as the phone, and because I could see their computers, I could equally see every single phone call that they were making. But the scammers would always make up fake names, and this group had their real names in their telephony system, so over a period of maybe a few weeks, I kind of put together a little diagram, which said let's say the person on this extension, their real name is this, and their fake name is something else. And thanks to a tool from one of my friends, the Midnight SB, it looked as if they were receiving inbound calls on the phone system, but still always reaching me. Hi there, my computer's going beep, beep, beep. Thank you for calling. It says beep, beep, beep. What do I do? Okay, can you, on the computer? Can you go nearby the computer? Yeah, it's on my computer. On the screen. Yeah, can you? It's doing a beep, beep, yeah, what beep, does beep, it beep, say? beep, flashing blue and green. Okay, and there is nothing coming up on the screen? No, 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 it's on the screen. It says Microsoft. That is a, a scam message with the scam number on the screen. This is not real. This is a scam. So yeah. let me tell you what you have to do. I googled for I will the real help Microsoft out. phone number. Is that what I was supposed to do? E exactly. That is the way you got connected to me. And I'm here to help you out with this problem. Oh. You just need to follow the instructions on the computer. Oh. First of all, let me know that if it is a laptop Wait. or a desktop. Did, this, did the scam warning already infect, infect my computer? Have they infected me? It has infected the computer, but we will fix that for you. Can you listen to me and follow the instructions yeah, there, what please? What is your name? This is not a normal thing, sir. You can see that that's a Trojan spyware on the computer. Trojan? Trojan. Can yeah, you how did I screen? get the Trojan condom spyware on my computer? Might yeah, be, the Trojan condom spyware got like... on my computer. It says Trojan spyware. What the f***? That means, sir, that you know about the Trojan things. No, what Trojan is a Trojan? Spyware. Wait, on my computer? It's on my computer right now? Right now? On the computer? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, no, yes, sir, but how do I know... Is... Wait, 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 wait. How do I know you're the real Microsoft, sir, though? How do I know you're the real Microsoft? Sir... Can you tell me from where you have got my number and how you have I went me? I went on Google and I searched up a Microsoft phone number and I found your phone number. This is really then my... you have... Yeah. Yeah, okay, making... Okay, I'm just making yeah. sure. So, how do I get rid of the, the viruses on the computer over here? Like this virus? I'm recommending you, sir. If you don't need that, I can close hey, why are one. you laughing? Okay? I think you are Why do you think this me, is sir? funny? I, I don't know. Why do you think this is funny, sir? You think it's a joke? Because, sir, you are telling me like Do you like think this. it's a joke? You, you think this is a joke? Wait, do you think this is a joke? Do you think this is a joke? Yeah, of course. You are, you are doing jokes. No, I think you're a joke, you Beta. No, I think you're a joke. Listen to me now. You're a scammer. That's what I think you are. I know for a fact that you're a scammer. I know my truth. I know you're a scammer. If you bro. know, sir, if you know that thing, why are you calling us? Because I wanted to see you, bro. I wanted to, I wanted to see you and talk to you at the same time. Because I know you're a scammer, bro. Like, I, I know everything that you're a scammer. So I'm gone. Listen yeah, to me. Yeah, because I have... If you're thinking to right now... Right, listen to me. If you're thinking that you are... We are the scammer. So right now, I'm in the computer. What do you really do? Yeah. If you're thinking like these things, I'm not going to but leave But why the did you tell me there was something wrong what with the computer? Do? Why did you tell me there was something Sir, wrong? Sir, you are telling me. I'm no. not telling you something Yeah, wrong. you, you were. Yeah, you told me there was... Wrong. You told me there was something wrong with the computer. I showed you this listen one. Listen to me. Listen no, to me. No, 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 no. I... To... No, listen here, Beta. Beta, I'm your father, Beta. Listen to me now. You treat me with respect. Okay, okay. Yeah, really? Beta. Yeah, listen yeah. to me, Beta. No, why are you closing everything, Beta? Why are you laughing? Listen, it's not a joke. He might think scamming people is a joke, but I don't think stealing hundreds of dollars is something to play around with. So I turned to the internet to see what they have to say about Weardot.
I googled for reviews, and the first thing I found was WearDot's profile on Trustpilot. I began reading tons of reviews. They had 4.9 stars, with exactly 3,585 reviews in total. 96% of these reviews are 5 stars, but if we sort the reviews by 1 star, we can see plenty of reviews from people explaining their outright terrible experience with WearDot. I won't go through all 3,000 of the reviews myself, but if any of you watching this video want to take a look for yourself, I've left a link in the description below. If you or a loved one have been scammed by WearDot, please reach out to me on my Twitter or email as I am very interested in the story and maybe we can help you get your money back. Despite WearDot claiming to operate as a software development company from New York City, WearDot is actually a subsidiary of Minds Insider Private Limited under the leadership of Ganesh Bishwakarma and Sanjeev Sewa. But these aren't the real owners behind this operation. The real directors and masterminds that run this call center is Prakash Vishwakarma and Barkatula Khan. These are two names and key players that we will hear later in this story. Anyways, my team and I reported WearDot to Microsoft themselves. We explained through email in detail how the scams work. We sent them links to the fake Microsoft websites so they can maybe, just maybe, take down the scammer's Google AdSense account. This means when people Google for Microsoft's phone number, they won't get in contact with WearDot, but rather the real Microsoft support team instead. Hopefully this also leads to WearDot's EV certificate being revoked, as they shouldn't have that anymore. Since I knew this might be the end of WearDot, I decided to call the agents on the floor and tease them that something physical was going to happen. I know, there's like a lot of people so, in your office, right? There's a lot of scammers in your office. Yeah, first of all, tell, first of all, tell me, sir, which YouTube channel you have? Congratulations, you played yourself. I, I'm so no, curious to know about that. You're gonna find out later, buddy. You're gonna find out later. I'm not gonna tell you, bro. Listen, you're gonna find out very soon, <laughs> bro. You're gonna find out physically. You're gonna physically find out. Like, I'm giving you a warning what's happening. I'm giving you a verbal warning, sir. No. And you need to listen to me, sir. Are you excited to be on YouTube? Say, I'm excited to be on YouTube. Say it right now. And sure, maybe I didn't even know yet what was coming to them. I just knew it was karma. Another step into the destruction of this call center, I decided to map out the scammers their infrastructure with a friend of mine, and we quickly realized what we were dealing with. If we split it up into multiple sections, we have the scammers' websites, the phone system, the payment infrastructure, and of course their local network. If we take a look into the payment portion of their infrastructure, this is where they receive the money from the victims through SolidGate to the people who own the bank accounts in the USA, and they probably siphon that money back to the bank accounts in India. Yeah. Of course, they have a phone system to make calls, which is vital PBX, so there is maybe something we can do there. And finally, we have access to their router and network in combination with all of their computers. So the final plan was to destroy WearDot on a so-called burn day. Although this plan wouldn't go as well as we thought, as in part one, we sent an insider into the scammers their office based building to grab some photos and videos, but he could not manage to make it into the actual scam call center and actually got kicked out of the building instead. He said he would go back to the call center for this so-called burn day so he can record this scammers their reactions to all of their infrastructure being destroyed. We waited for a few weeks to go by so we can book the insider's hotel and flights, but on March 7, 2024, while watching the scammers' computers, everything just completely shut down. Within seconds, all of the scammers' computers and internet connection went offline, leaving one computer on the network and still physically connected to the power. At this time, the CCTV cameras were down, so the only way I could see what was happening in the center was through the computer webcam. The quality assurance manager's computer was connected to a totally different network allowing me to grab this webcam footage oh wait we will get back to this webcam footage soon wait what so after this random event of the scammers computers going down i didn't exactly know what was happening i definitely put some thought out there that they possibly did just get raided but in reality i really did just think it was a network issue that was until the scammers computers never came back online i thought there was no possible way the scammers could have figured out i hacked them i hadn't done anything suspicious on their network as of recent and i didn't even release my part one video yet so i honestly really did think it was just a network issue of course where dot's website was still online and active so i decided to call the phone number on the page to see if anyone would answer Answer, but of course I couldn't get anyone on the phone and at this point I thought they maybe just changed locations and were waiting to get back up and running but it wasn't until I released my part one video where I found out the real truth to what happened on March 7th. I received a comment on the part one video telling me a call center in New Delhi with the same name WearDot had been raided by the police earlier that month. As soon as I read this comment my heart dropped because I knew they didn't just disappear for no reason. I immediately opened up Google and I began searching for call center raids in New Delhi that had occurred in the last month and I found multiple articles when I clicked on these articles, everything became very clear to me. WearDog got raided by the police. In this article, it states that the New Delhi Police Crime Branch busted a fake call center in Southeast Delhi and arrested two people for allegedly cheating United States citizens under the pretext of providing technical services. On March 7th, secret information was received
received at the PS Cyber slash SED that a fake international call center is being operated in the area of PS Badarpur. On the basis of this information, a team led by Inspector Coldeep conducted a raid at the Mohan Cooperative Industrial Estate, Matara Road, New Delhi, where a person by the name of Prakash Vishwakarma was found running an illegal call center. Beside him, there were 36 other persons, including two females. They were entrusted with the work of attending calls of US citizens, impersonating themselves as employees of leading firm Where.com, and used to charge hefty amounts from the victims on the pretext of providing technical support. Prakash Vishwakarma and Barkatula Khan, both of them have been arrested and accused. 38 telecallers have been bound to the case, and officials said more details are awaited. So in my opinion, the craziest bit is that I actually recorded a portion of the raid without even realizing it, and it was definitely a thought in my head that it could have been a potential raid, but I really just had no idea at the time. This is the footage that I recorded on that day. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Immediately, we can see two people wearing jackets with something on the back that's too pixelated to read. I hear noises of tape being pulled. I can see people with folders walking around, but most interesting of all, I saw them moving the computers. Here we can see one of the only female agents working in this call center pick up one of the computers and move it away towards the entrance of the room. Something that is pretty notable is that I saw a couple of the key players in the office that day, not only through my computer access, but through the live webcam footage itself. Here we can see Sorov Suman holding his computer right here, which is the same computer that I had access to for about one year. I also saw Rakesh Kumar, the quality assurance manager, and this guy Barkat, who manages all of the bookkeeping. It's great to know some of the key players were in the office that day and they didn't just get tipped off before the raid. I also captured these people in suits who might have been the building owners and I also saw people in these jackets right here which looks very similar to CBI jackets. Of course it wasn't the CBI who raided this call center but rather the local police and it was a bit difficult to hear what was going on. Everything was kind of muffled but I managed to get this conversation on film. <laughs> I can't exactly figure out who the police are in this clip. It could be these people or even these guys with the jackets. But all I know is all of their computers shut down at once. We literally saw them move the computers live on the webcam feed. And I additionally captured the date that all of this occurred, which was March 7th, the exact same date that's mentioned in all of the articles. I'm pretty confident we just witnessed this scam call center get a taste of the law. Unfortunately, the rest of my footage is quite boring. It's literally just a webcam feed of this room with the door closed, capturing absolutely nothing. Thankfully, from from this webcam feed though, we know the police brought in the scammers for questioning and ran forensics on all of the computers. The police obviously searched the scammers and their office space building to get necessary evidence to build a solid case. If the police turned on one of the computers, they would find files consisting of victim information, previous calls with victims, and of course financial spreadsheets. In all of the articles, it says the scammers are being charged with cheating, dishonestly inducing delivery of property under IPC section 420, punishment for identity theft under 66C of the 2008 IT amendment and punishment for cheating by impersonation by using computer resource under 66D of the same amendment. Since Weardot is straight up committing fraud by using Microsoft's name to boost sales for their antivirus, Microsoft did take an interest into our investigation. They actually got back to my team and I. They told us they are actively trying to take down Weardot's infrastructure. And now when you visit the payment portion of Weardot's website, you might get a smart screen message that looks like this. It pretty much warns you that the page you are trying to visit could be malicious. And hopefully this type of warning prevents future people from being a victim of Weardot's scam. Microsoft also replied, stating they are keen to revoke Weardot's EV certificate in combination with all of their websites. Reporting the information to Microsoft could have led to the demise of this call center. We have asked them for information on the raid, and we have yet to receive a response from them. Maybe they aren't able to legally speak about it yet, but if it wasn't Microsoft, it might have been a victim of the scam who filled out an IC3 report, and it actually made it back to India, ultimately resulting in this awesome win for society and for the scam baiting community. The police pretty much destroyed and took down this call center for me. The bosses of this operation, Prakash Vishwakarma and Barkatula Khan, hopefully will spend a few years in jail and never return to scamming, and we also hope that other police stations will take an example from the New Delhi Police Crime Branch. 
by making these videos, we can make more people aware of these types of scams and hopefully prevent future people from being victimized. I think it's safe to say, Weardot has shut down for good, at least for now.